Hello everybody, uh, the exam season is upon us, uh, so I thought I would give you a bit of a revision on my material specifically for system administration and internet working. Uh, so I understand you must have done some revision with Linda, uh, which, in which she explained the general format of the exam, she showed you the mock exam as well that we have. Uh, remember the mock exam is there just to show you what the uh, exam conditions will look like, so that you know what the interface looks like and what type of questions to expect rather than just give you all of the questions to the exam. I hope you understand that. Uh, so, uh, and she must have done some revision on her material, so I thought I would uh, do a quick video to explain uh, exactly what you need to study uh, on my side of things. Uh, remember, it's not just uh, Linda's uh, Teaching Block 2 material in Windows that gets covered by this exam. It's the entire module, starting from September with me, on everything that we did on the Linux material as well. So uh, we had four lab seats, we set up the operating system, so we set up our Prometheus virtual machine, then we did a little bit of virtual network setup with VMware and the virtual machines in there, then we did a little bit of uh, routing uh, between all of the virtual machines and then we set up a DNS server in Linux uh, as the last task. So today I will go through the lab seats with you and I will explain what you basically need to uh, know for the exam itself. Remember, the exam is taking place on Tuesday, this Tuesday coming. Uh, it starts at 9 o'clock and it, it lasts 1 hour, 9 to 10. Make sure you check on your timetable the exact location of your exam. There's a lot of you, there are lots of different locations. Okay, don't ask your friends and go where they go. That will be wrong. There's a probability that you're not actually in the same uh, examination room in the same lab with everybody else so please check your timetable specifically and make sure you go to where your timetable tells you to go and of course again please make sure that you're there at least 15 to 20 minutes before the start of the exam so try to be there uh, quarter 20 to 9 because we will need to uh, let you in the exam center uh, you need to log into the computers and have everything ready so that you start the actual exam itself by nine o'clock so, what are you expected to see in the exam? So, we have the lab sheets that uh, we used. Basically, the idea is that you could study for the exam completely from your logbook if you wanted to. That will, of course, depend on how well you did on your logbook. Definitely, if you got a first class mark on your logbook, if you got more than 70%, you can easily revise everything from your logbook and you won't see anything in the exam that will not actually be in there. If you didn't do so well in the logbook or if you don't feel confident about it and you want to study everything anyway, uh, the only thing that I can suggest that you can do is basically go through the lab sheets and make sure you understand everything, uh, practice a couple of the commands that exist there, make sure that you know what they do and generally make sure that you know what's in there. Uh, so, for the last, so for the first lab sheet we installed the operating system. Remember you don't need to know specifically things that are uh, used for our specific environment in the lab okay it will be general knowledge about linux and more specifically centos or red hat enterprise linux uh, version uh, specifically that we have used so for the installation steps i would like you to know uh, what sort of installation types you can have so we can have a development and creative workstation, we can have a minimal install workstation, uh, you can have a known desktop workstation. I want you to know what types of installations uh, CentOS and Red Hat Enterprise basically uh, gives you uh, to do. You don't need to worry about the specific settings that we used in our virtual machine, 200 gigabytes, 4 cores of CPU, 16 gigabytes of RAM. Uh, that's not, you know, that's not knowledge. It's knowledge that applies only to the specific setup here, so you don't need to worry about it at this point. Moving on to the second page, we have hard drive partitioning. So I want you to know what types of partitions uh, a Linux setup needs to have. What? Uh, so there's a slash partition, there's a swap partition, there's a boot partition. So what are the default partitioning? Uh, what is the default partitioning table for uh, a CentOS uh, installation uh, that you would basically find in the industry and so on. You don't need to worry about uh, the IP addresses so much that we've used. Again, these are specific to our setup here and everything. I want you to know what the set domain is. 
So basically, uh, you will deal with this in the DNS lab sheet as well. So I want you to know that a computer's name consists from the prefix and the suffix. In our case, the prefix is the name of the computer, which is Prometheus, and the suffix is, let's say, the surname of the computer, which is NetLab Airport UK. So I want you to know this rule that it exists. I definitely, definitely want you to know all of the commands. Uh, this is basic knowledge for most versions of Linux operating systems. I want you to know what ls does, what cd does, what who does, ps, and everything else. Out of all of the commands, the trickiest ones to remember perhaps will be the ones for networking, which are the ones that are down here. Remember the first command here basically brings up network arg with the name of ENS33, with an IP address of whatever your Prometheus has, and a subnet mask of 255.255.0, which is the default class C subnet mask. So this configures and starts the network card. The second one adds a default gateway onto the system. So root add default network, default subnet mask, and a gateway of 28.254. The third command adds a DNS server onto our system. So it tells us that the name server that our system needs to use is 28.1, and that is controlled by etc. resolve.conf. And then the last one adds a search path, so a standard uh, suffix that we can uh, that your computer will look for every time you try to contact something uh, by default. So if you try to ping Prometheus, it will automatically assume that you're trying to ping Prometheus.netlabeportacuk, and that's what uh, the suffix does in this case. We move on to uh, NetServe. Uh, you don't need to know the specific address and everything, there's no point. However, I do need you to know the SCP commands and the SSH commands, so basically how to connect into this uh, server. Uh, you need to know how to basically copy uh, stuff from the server into a terminal uh, from it. Of course, you don't need to worry about how to get Google Chrome to run in as root. It's a very specific thing. Uh, this is just something that we used in order for you to progress a little bit, advance your skills in, you know, in Googling information and figuring out how to get something that doesn't work to actually work. So the first lab sheet is that, installation of the operating system, the commands and everything else. The second lab sheet uh, talks about VMware. So I do want you to know how to install VMware Workstation. So I want you to know that essentially it's a script that, en that ends in .bundle and all you need to do is run that script just like you run any other custom script in, uh, in most versions of Linux with dot slash and then the name of uh, the script itself. When you're building a virtual machine, I want you to know the basic principles of how you actually build a virtual machine in VMware, what characteristics this virtual machine needs to have. So it needs to have a number of CPU cores, it needs to have a hard drive, it needs to have some memory, it needs to have a network card. So I need you to know this. I also need you to know the different types of networking that your virtual machine can have in a VMware player. So what are the default networking modes, NAT, bridge, host only, and what they actually do. Uh, moving on to the installation and everything else. We've done the installation again, so we don't need to worry about this. I want you to know the process of how you actually can clone a virtual machine uh, in VMware. The fact that the virtual machine's files physically reside onto your virtualization host in your home folder in the VMware directory by default and all you need to do is basically copy the file of containing the copy the folder containing the files of the virtual machine and then you just make another copy and then you open that you select I copied it because VMware will detect that this virtual machine looks like another virtual machine that you already have and take it from there. As for the virtual network, as I said, I want you to know the different networking modes that we have and I want you to know and understand the fact that we took those three default networking modes and basically threw them out the window uh, because we decided to, to set up a custom uh, networking. So we edited the executable, the .vmx file of the virtual machine that we were using so by running this fix vmnet dev script so that basically changed the networking settings in the configuration file in the .vmx configuration file of the vm and added three custom network cards out of which we created our own script that's called vm underscore subnet 
that would basically start and run VMNet 0 and VMNet 1 as network ads on your Prometheus and VMNet 2 and VMNet 3 as network processes on your Prometheus so that all of your virtual machines can connect onto them and communicate with each other. So I want you to understand the concept behind all of this that we basically had three default modes of networking but they didn't really serve us serve us serve our purposes so we created a new custom mode of networking which basically pretty much is host only networking but it's taking away all of the automation such as the DHCP servers and everything else that VMware provides for its network cards and we've customized everything so that we can manually set up our IP addresses onto the network. As far as the IP addresses onto our network are concerned, I want you to understand the concepts that we have used in order to create our network diagram. So I want you to basically understand subnetting and CIDR. Okay, if you go back onto Moodle, if you go onto the week which is this one, you will find the links, this one and this one, of course, of the both the virtual network weeks. You will find links to uh, firewall.cx. If you don't understand subnetting or the IP addresses, the concept, the concept and how we actually uh, took a default class C network and we broke it down into smaller networks so that we can have uh, the number of hosts that we wanted to have on our network. I really recommend that you go here and you read all of this again and follow the articles all the way to the end. The idea is that we've taken a class C subnet and we've broken it down into 64 slices because we have 48 computers in the class and we've given a range of IP addresses to each of our computers. If you want a refresher on this, my video lecture, my video lecture explaining all of this is of course available back on Moodle again. So if you look at the virtual network one, uh, there is a virtual network uh, lecture recording available here so you should be able to see okay so past that we can go on to the next lab sheet which is our routing lab sheet so essentially uh, what we've done is we have built our network it consists of three different subnets subnet 30 subnet 31 subnet 32 and as you probably know by now you can have network connectivity across different networks and across different subnets unless there is some routing in place. We are sent for the purpose of this lab sheet our Prometheus and V Prometheus 1 into routers with some software that we used and the software is of course Quagga and we're using, using the root protocol of OSPL. So I want you to understand the, concept, the contents of zebra.com and ospfd.com so zebra.com will basically tell us which network cards are involved in the routing process and ospfd.com will tell us first of all which computer is the acting router in our network so that's the ospf router id statement in the beginning and then it will tell us which networks this router knows about and according to this list of networks the router will advertise to all its neighboring OSPF routers and will basically tell us that you know I can connect to this network so if you want to connect to this network you need to connect to this network through me. So with Zebra and OSPF out of the way I need you to know that they should live in etc. Of course uh, I need you to know how to enable packet forwarding so I need you to remember this command definitely memorize it. I want you to know that you can run Zebra and OSPF either in debug mode in a terminal using these commands or as services and I want you to know what the watch root minus n command does so that basically puts the routing table of your computer uh, in terminal permanently and refreshes it uh, every now and then live so that you can see any change in the routing table. Installation of Prometheus 1 is basically the same process so we don't need to worry about that as much. And then the fact that you can run Zebra and OSPF as services with these two commands and that you can set them to start at boot time automatically with those two commands. Okay, nothing was a bonus round. Um, you shouldn't really see uh, any questions on nothing, you know, what the IP tables command is to actually achieve this and everything. 
But I might ask you what nothing is, what is network uh, address translation and why do we use it? And finally, the last lab sheet is our DNS lab sheet. Essentially, we are turning one of our computers, our host, our Prometheus, into a DNS server. So I want you to know the mechanics uh, involved in this. In our case, we're changing our suffix to include the name of your computer so that every Prometheus has a unique name because every Prometheus will become the, uh, basically the domain server responsible for the domain that you are uh, basically advertising to everybody else. And I want you to know the process for this to happen. So the installation happens with yum installed bind and bind utils. So bind is the name of the software basically that runs uh, DNS in Linux. I want you to know that bind is generally controlled by the etc. main d.com file. I want you to definitely know how to state which computer in that network is the actual DNS server. So which ports and IP addresses to actually listen on for the service to run. And permissions security wise, which computers or which networks are allowed to query that particular DNS server uh, for any name to IP address translation, basically. I want you to know what forward and reverse zones are and how we use them. You don't need to remember the, the exact configuration of everything uh, in the zone file. I, there's no point me asking this from you. I would like you to know what the hosts file actually does. So. I want you to know why we have this here. So these are basically, this is basically the file that gives the name to IP address translation to anybody that will ask this DNS server about a computer that this DNS server is responsible for. So if somebody pings vprometheus0.shumi.netlabreport.cdk, my computer should reply and say, yes, I have a vprometheus0, and his address is 148.9730.250, there you go. So that's what it does. Past that, again, I want you to know that you can restart it as a service, and the service is called named D. And you can add it to the file with this command, so remember these commands as well. And I want you to know what the dig command does, exactly what it tells us or what it should tell us if a DNS server is actually working. Okay. And that's pretty much it. Uh, I will make sure that uh, all material is available on, on Moodle and it's, uh, it's not hidden and you can see it and everything. And if you basically have any questions until Tuesday, uh, feel free to ask me. Uh, on Sunday I might not reply, but Monday morning I will definitely reply to all of my emails. So I should be able to help you a little bit more if you need. Okay, good luck and I will see you at the exam.